Welcome back. We're at Unstoppable Truth studying Matthew chapter 24 and 25. We are talking about the Word of God, unstoppable. Jesus spoke it. It will happen every last bit of it. We're continuing on in Matthew chapter 24 that we started last week. If you missed that segment or any of the other segments, you can go to unstoppabletruthministries.com and get the, all the teachings for free there. You can even go to the PowerPoint presentations and get the whole class with the slides and the scriptures all on there for free um, and have access to whatever you need uh, at unstoppabletruthministries.com. I hope you can check it out sometime. Now let's continue on with what Jesus Christ said about the end of the age and about his second coming. He said that there were going to be many false prophets and that they would rise up. And if anybody is telling you, come to this stadium and see Jesus, Jesus is going to appear. Or come here, hear the, the, the true Christ, the true, the true Messiah over here. Don't go. He's already come. He's coming on the clouds. That's the only place you need to be looking for your Messiah. Now, I know in Islam, they believe in Isa and the return of Jesus Christ. And they believe that Isa is going to come back alongside the Mahdi and begin to be like his prophet and say that the Christians got it all wrong and the Muslims got it all right. And many people are going to pour out into the stadiums to go see Isa, um, this Jesus or this Christ or this Messiah or this prophet. And I would encourage you, saints, do not go. It's possible that the elect or the saints could get deceived by this. So I just want to make you aware that that is a great possibility here very soon in the future. These false Christs will have great signs, great wonders. They will deceive and lead astray. Uh, many, even if possible, the elect. Um, I'm going to be reading some of my, my scripture over here on the teleprompter, and I will be going over pretty much my outline that is almost word for word verbatim the scripture itself. But I want us to continue, and I want you to try to outline it yourself. Just keep it really short, really sweet. Each thought, just keep going down, down, down the page. I see, I have, Jesus said, see, I have told you beforehand. Jesus has already told us this is going to happen. When it begins to happen, don't do it. Don't go. So if they say to you, behold, he's in the wilderness or the desert, do not go out there. If they tell you, behold, he is in the secret places or in the inner rooms, don't believe it. He is telling us, don't believe it. Don't go there and don't do it. Satan, in the scripture, in the Bible, it says that Satan can come as an angel of light. And if you're encountering Jesus and he looks like an angel of light to you, that's not your Jesus. And don't be deceived by an angel of light. You must know that, it, that Jesus is coming, and he's coming on the clouds, and he himself said, I'm not going to be there. So don't go. He said in verse 27, For just as lightning flashes from the east to the west, so, far, uh, so, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever there is a body or a corpse that has been fallen, like is dead and died on the side of the road, the vultures or eagles will flock together. So they're going to, he's basically letting you know there's going to be a lot of dead bodies, a lot of corpses, and they're going to be laying on the ground, and a lot of birds or vultures that eat bodies um, will be flocking around them. Now I have to tell you, this is a little bit morbid, but I love this scripture. This is a fascinating thing that Jesus Christ says about the end of the age. He talks about these birds of prey, these birds that eat human flesh. You're going to see these birds in the book of Revelation, these flesh-eating birds at the, at the Battle of Armageddon. You're going to see, uh, see them happen, but I've got a little mystery, a little, a little uh, uh, awesome little nugget here to show you. I was studying these birds, and I was like, well, where else have it, has it talked about these birds? Let's go back to the story of David and Goliath. Now, here's this huge giant, and he's going to fight for all of the Philistines. 
And here's the Israeli army, and nobody, everybody is terrified of him, and they don't want to go up against him. And he is taunting them, and he's like, I'm coming against you with sword and spear. And, and he is just taunting them. Well, David was 16. He was out in the fields tending the shepherds, and, his, and, and he went to go to the battlefield line to help his brothers. And when he arrived there, he heard this, this giant taunting the Israeli uh, people and, tr- and, and army. And David was like, why are you guys letting him do that? Why aren't you going after him? Well, God raised this young 16-year-old boy up to go after this giant. Now, David was a shepherd, and he watched over the flocks. And one of the things that shepherds knew how to do was to sling a stone, throw a a slingshot, and ward off wolves or ward, ward off anything that would be coming to get his sheep. So... He went and he said, hey, I'll fight the giant and I'm going to win because God's on my side. So the, the king Saul let him go out. He put on his king's armor and he couldn't even wear it. He was still a small guy. He wasn't big yet. And he took the armor off. He grabbed his slingshot. He goes to the battlefield and Goliath is laughing his head off. He's like, oh, he really begins to taunt David. And he really, uh, uh, really lets him have it. Now, can you imagine this giant and his warrior and his sword and his javelin and and there's this boy with a rock in his hand. Now, let's, I'm going to read to you what David said back to Goliath. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, now pay attention, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. David was saying, when your body is laying on the ground with its head chopped off and the birds of prey are eating your flesh, that is a sign not just to the Philistines, but it's a sign to the entire world that there is a God in Israel, a God of this Jewish boy. Guess what happened? David slew Goliath with his rock. He slingshot it, hit him in the head. He was dead. David went up, chopped the head off. Actually, I think uh, Jewish tradition says that he kept the head on his mantle. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he chopped the head off, and the birds of prey began to eat the body of Goliath. These birds that Jesus is referring to is a fulfillment of this scripture about King David. It is a Davidic prophecy, and it is a fulfillment of, to the fullness, to the very specifics of what David did here at the slaying of Goliath, is about the birds of prey. And when you see the birds of prey eating the bodies, you will know that there is a God in Israel. Jesus said it about the end of the age. The book of Revelation is going to refer to it as well. Verse 29, and it will be very hard for me to not stand on this table and jump up and down. It is so important. It says, immediately after the days of the tribulation. When? Immediately after the tribulation. The sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. And the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens, in the sky. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and beat their breasts and lament in anguish. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory and brilliance and splendor. Now, when does the second coming of Jesus Christ happen? When does he come down on the clouds and when does he come uh, uh, on the clouds of heaven? He said it in verse 29. Nobody reads the scriptures above it. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, we have to go through the tribulation. The second coming doesn't happen until after The tribulation. Jesus had already talked about the birth pains, the tribulation, and the great tribulation. He said, now after these things, I will will begin to descend out of the clouds. 
the next thing he says is that he will send out his angels with a trumpet call and they will gather together his elect ones from the four winds of the universe from one end of the universe to the other do you see that when we studied our resurrection from the dead verses we found that there were going to be clouds trumpets shouts voices of archangels Jesus coming you see all of these details in his description here and he even puts the timing to it and he got very specific and he said after the tribulation of those days your rapture will not take place until after the great tribulation and that isn't until uh, Revelation 14 verse 14 and, and, and after. That is when the great harvest happens in the book of Revelation. We're, going, we're paying attention to our details here. Lastly, um, Jesus begins to say, or he begins to say in verse 32, learn this lesson from the fig tree, that as soon as it puts forth its young shoots and its leaves become tender, you will know for a sure that summer is near. So also when you see all of these signs taken together, you may know for a sure, surety that he is near, that he is at the very doors about to knock. We can know for sure when Jesus is about to come by the signs that he has just described to us in last week's class and this week's class. How can we know for sure you have to pay attention to the fig tree? You remember when we did the class on the mystery of Israel? We talked about this fig tree. Israel saw themselves as the fig tree and their nation of Israel as the fig tree. They knew in Jeremiah chapter 8 when he cursed the fig tree and withered it in Jeremiah that that meant their nation was going to be taken from them. We saw Jesus do it again uh, 2,000 years ago where he cursed the fig tree and the nation was taken away from the Jews for 2,000 years. He says, when you see the nation of Israel blossoming again like the fig tree and beginning to produce fruit again, that is the generation in its entirety that will begin to see all of these things come to pass. He said, truly I tell you, the generation, the whole multitude of the people at the same time and a definite given period of time. Many Bible scholars agree on this point that when Israel became a nation in 1948, that that is the generation that will see all of these signs coming to pass. Now, they're older. They're the baby boomers. They're the 60 and 70-year-olds with us today, and they're the ones that will be the eyes that see all of this come to pass. Sky and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Jesus said every word that he says is going to come to pass. It is un unstoppable truth that's why I've named it this Jesus said this is going to be unstoppable truth then he says something really curious here and most people don't understand this because they don't understand Rosh Hashanah the, the fifth feast of the Jews or the first of the fall feasts he said no one will know uh, no one knows the hour uh, the, no one will know the day or the hour except for God my father that is a term used for Rosh Hashanah. He's actually referring to Rosh Hashanah here, and he's giving you a hint and a clue here. On Rosh Hashanah, they didn't know if the new moon celebration would happen on the 29th day or the 30th day. Would it be um, which way it would fall? No one would know which way it would fall except for God my Father. No one knows the day or the hour except for God my Father. It is a wink to Rosh Hashanah. All the Jews that heard him say this would have understood him when he said it. Jesus goes on and talks about, as in the days of Noah, so will be the son coming of the Son of Man. For just as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, so, uh, 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 until the very day when Noah got on the ark. People are going to be going about their lives, and, and just as life as usual, and it's going to take over them, and, and they're going to suddenly be in dire straits, and it will happen very fast. And they did not understand until the flood came and swept them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now he's talking about, I believe, the rapture here. He's giving you different scenarios. He said that there will be two men in a field. One will be taken. One will be left. 
That means one will be raptured out, one will be left. One will be resurrected or, or changed in the moment in a twinkling of an eye, and the other will be left. Um, two women, this happens all at Rosh Hashanah, the coming of the Messiah, the celebration of the Messiah. Two women will be grinding at the hand mill. One will be taken, the other will be left. It says, watch, give attention, uh, be cautious, be active. Do not, uh, and do not, know, you do not know what kind of a day or whether it is, um, it is a near one or whether it is a remote one. Um, when the coming of the Lord will happen. You don't know if it's going to be near or if it's going to be far, but you've just got to always stay ready. Don't give up and don't lose faith. He will come like a thief in the night. He had the, house, had the householder known that the thief was going to come, he wouldn't have allowed it. He would have stayed awake. He's saying the same thing to you. Stay awake. Stay prepared. Be a watchman. Pay attention to the things going on around you. You also must be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour which you do not expect. Why would he tell the saints here to pay attention and wait until his coming? We have to wait until the coming of Jesus Christ. Here is a wonderful parable that Jesus gives at the end of Matthew chapter 24, and it's the parable of the good and wise servant. If you are hoarding and want to have guns and protect your family and kill everybody who comes near you, I don't think you're going to be doing what you need to be doing at the end of the age, and you're not going to make it to heaven based on this, this parable that he gives. This parable is an answer to the first original three questions that the disciples asked. What is the sign of the end times? What is the sign of the second coming? When is this all going to come to pass? The wise servant, the master left and went away for a while. Um, one of the other verses in Luke, I think it is, it says that he went away to gain his kingdom. And that's where Jesus went. He went to heaven. He's building his kingdom. And he went away for a while. And while his, he was gone, the master was gone, the servants were found giving food and supply to those who are in need. If you are a Christian, you need to be found giving food and supply to those who are in need. If you're hoarding it and keeping it to yourself and not sharing and giving like the Word of God tells us to, you are not doing it appropriately. And I don't. I think the scripture here, as it goes on, it gets very intense, and, and you're not going to make it. It says, um, Blessed is the servant when his master comes back. He is found giving food and supplies at the proper time. His master will set him over all of his possessions. The wicked servant, the master delayed, the master is going to be gone for a while, so he begins to beat his fellow servants. He eats and drinks with the drunkards, and on the day that no one will expect, and at an hour that he is not aware of, the master will come back and punish him. So if you're found beating people up and drinking and carousing and getting drunk and on drugs, and Jesus comes back, you're toast. You will not make it. You are part of the wicked servants, and, and it says the master will not, um, uh, will not be there for you. On that day, at that hour, he is not aware. The master will punish him. He will cut him up with scour scourging. He will put him in with the pretenders and hypocrites, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That means you go to hell where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. We also have two more parables, the parable of the ten virgins, the parable of the ten talents, and also the parable of the sheep and the goats. And in each one of these, ta these uh, parables in Matthew chapter 25, they are in answer to the original three questions. So they are all talking about the end of the age. The parable of the ten virgins, five will have their oil ready and prepared, five will not. The moral of the story is you need to prepare with the oil of the Holy Spirit. You need to prepare for him and, and, and have a relationship with him. If you're not prepared, you can't go and borrow somebody else's salvation. You have to have your own relationship with God. Then there's the parable of the, the, the ten talents. And in the ten talents, um, the one who hides his talent and doesn't use it for the Lord, doesn't express it for God, doesn't give it out, he will be lost forever. He will not make it. You may be a Christian and you may have a talent, but if you're not giving your talent unto the Lord, um, then he can't use you and he isn't, he isn't going to use you and, and, and you won't be able to, to make it past the test at the last days. 
Um, a few years back, I was uh, getting my car fixed at a shop, and an old lady sat next to me, and I asked her, I said, are you a Christian? And she said, oh, I've sung in the church for 60 years. And I said, oh, well, that's just lovely. I said, but are you a Christian? And she says, oh, I loved singing in the choir. She didn't have a good answer for me. I don't care if you've sung in the choir. I don't care if you sit in church every week. I don't care if you go to confession every week. I don't care what practices you do. If you haven't asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, it's not going to be enough. So I jumped out of my chair. I grabbed this little old lady's hand, and I said, you know what? Just pray this simple prayer after me. And we prayed this simple prayer of Jesus coming into my life, forgiving me of my sins. And after it was over, she threw her arms around me and kissed me all over my face. She went and paid her bill. She came back, hugged me again, and kissed me all over my face. And she did it three different times. God had touched her. She felt something, and something had changed. But now she is prepared. Now she has the oil. Now she is is, is, is not just going and being in the choir. She is now in a relationship with him. Lastly, I would like us to talk about the sheep and the goats. The sheep are found giving food, giving water, giving uh, medical aid, visiting the prisoner in prison. And when, uh, at the end of the age, it says the sheep go to the right and the, t- the goats go to the left. And they, Jesus says to them, he says, because you gave to the least of these, you've done it unto me. And the sheep even go, they go, well, when did we ever do that for you? We don't remember doing this for you. And he says, because you did it to just the, the lowliest of people, you've done it unto me. Then the tares, the tares are the guys that don't give anything away. They don't give their food. They don't give their water. They don't give medical aid. And they don't um, visit the prisoners. And they, they become a goat, and they go off to the left side. And Jesus said, because you didn't give unto the least of these, I will not give unto you. It is a stern warning for us here at the end of the age because there is a great temptation to hoard and keep everything that is yours. We need to waste it all. We need to give it all into the kingdom of God while we're here. Give everything that you have. Give your talents. Give your oil. Give your life. Give your food, your shelter, your clothing, your, your visiting prisoners, taking care of the sick. Give of yourselves at the end of the age. Because Jesus said to the sheep, come unto me, I will reward you, my servants, prophets, and saints. And then he says to the goats, you will go into utter destruction and where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. I do not want you to go by the way of the weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want you to go into paradise with Jesus Christ. It is an amazing place to be, and it's worth the cross, and it's worth the price. Now, this is what Jesus Christ said the end of the age was going to look like. All of these verses are are an answer to those disciples' three original questions. What's the sign of the end times? What's the sign of your second coming? When is this all going to take place? And, beloved, I believe that because of the fig tree blossoming now, Israel is back on, the, on their, their nation. Um, I believe that we are at a very, very close, uh, we are at a very close to the end of all of this happening. Um, I, God bless you. I bless you. I pray that you will, be, you will be blessed. I pray that you will be a giver. And I pray that you will be a sustainer and a neighbor to all those around you. I pray that you will stand true even in the face of great persecution and trials. And I love you and I bless you and I pray that you will continue to learn the unstoppable truth of God's word. God bless.